Hello, everybody, and welcome to the absolutely, completely random podcast this week. I'm Andrew Rhodes. I'm your host, as always. I'm here all the time, always, no matter what happens. I will always be here. This week, I'm going to be talking about... I'm pulling up my topics here, and... I'm going to be talking about Dragon Ball Super's English dub has added the cast for the future Trunks arc, which is really exciting. We've all been looking forward to this. YouTube has made some additional changes to their partnership program uh, to better protect creators, and it's receiving a tremendous amount of backlash from some of the creators, and I'll explain about that and give my two cents in on it. There is a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon Yu-Gi-Oh card that is one of a kind... And it's on sale for 45 million yen. That's a hell of a lot of money. I'm also going to be discussing a new anime series called uh, GGG no Kitaro, which has been announced for Dragon Ball Super's time slot. That's um, <clears throat> actually a little disheartening. And I'm also going to be discussing a little bit about Dragon Ball Fighters because I've been seeing a lot of the clips and I kind of have some I want to talk about. All this, maybe more, you never know. This is a random podcast. Anything can happen here. But, as always, you know the drill. A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012 on eBay for all your collectible needs. I should just do a jingle and just make it so much easier. Uh, but yeah, if you're in the mood for collectibles, oddities, weird knickknacks, what have you, check out A Roads 2012 on eBay. A Roads hyphen 2012 on eBay. I have a weird variety of all strange things like you wouldn't believe. I am trying my best to get new stuff up. <clears throat> it is difficult to do when you have part time job and you work on the podcast, you work on other videos, you work on other stuff. It does take. It is time consuming because you got to do research on it to figure out what you want to set your price at. Make sure that it works. If it's something that's like has to turn on or something, make sure that you at least know what's wrong with it. Um, if it's a movie or something, know if there's any damage to it. Make sure it plays stuff like that. That takes time, and time sadly is something that I seem to keep running out of. But I'll explain. So anyway, uh, like I said, you know the drill. A R H O A D S hyphen 2012 on eBay for all your weird oddity collectible needs. And don't forget, you can also follow me on Twitter at Otaku Roads. <sighs> <clears throat> so, I guess we should go with how was my week. Well, uh, for starters, I actually got to enjoy a vacation. Yes, I did. Uh, I got a nice uh, week off because of inventory, and apparently, I've caught a cold. Personally, I think I've been having it for a while. It's just finally. Uh, gotten to the point where it can build itself up and just affect me to the point where now I'm starting to feel a little miserable. <laughs> so, <clears throat> you may hear me blowing my nose and coughing a lot during this week's podcast. Um, yeah, this is the 20th, by the way, so just want to throw that out there. Um, yep. Yeah. But I can actually give you what's coming up in the upcoming week. Well, uh, <clears throat> unless it changes, I have to do an overnight trip for work. Yay. To do more inventory. <clears throat> I have to do inventory for another store on Wednesday, then ours on Thursday. And in between there, I actually get to have some time off to myself, hopefully, to have some peace and tranquility. <laughs> yes. Still looking for another job yet, too. Um, otherwise, um, got some plans for the channel that I want to do later this year. Got some stuff that I'm working on, this and that, ad infinito, so on and so forth. But how have you been out there in the audience? I want to know how your weeks are. Let me know in the comments section below how your weeks are doing. Then again, you don't have to tell me. It's fine. You know, I give it ebb and flow here. I tell you how I'm doing. I, you know. I'm just curious how most of your weeks go. I mean, we had a nice little snowstorm here. Two of them right in a row. One minor, one major. <clears throat> so, pretty good. I got my uh, thing of high C fruit punch here to drink. That'll hopefully help me feel better. Hopefully. <clears throat> Doubt it though, but hopefully. But anyway, this week's been kind of dull. 
I just mostly relaxed. Um, <clears throat> worked on some stuff that I was uh, thinking about doing and some other things. But that's about it. But anyway, uh, let's jump into the podcast. Let's get this on so I can get some sleep. Uh, hopefully try to feel better. But anyway, let's just keep on keep it on. And let's do this. Ah, uh, Dragon Ball Super. Doesn't seem like enough time goes by when I'm not talking about you. For those of you out there that don't know, Dragon Ball Super is what I what I and a lot of fans would like to consider the actual continuation of the Dragon Ball Z saga. I personally like it. There are fans that hate it. I personally think it's cool. I could care less what a lot of the other fans think. You know, I care what I think. I like it. That's all that matters to me. Well, the English dub has finally gotten up to the Future Trunks arc. Now, I did talk about the uh, filler arc that they had in between that uh, got me excited because uh, it had the original Vegeta from the Ocean dub uh, doing the voice of clone Vegeta, which I thought was kind of cool. And I want to state this, though, for this. They kind of had a wasted opportunity here, but I'll explain. So, uh, David Gray and Garrett Sheenick are set to join the cast for the English dub of Dragon Ball Super for the Future Trunks arc. Uh, David Gray will be joining as uh, Zamasu and Garrett Sheenick as Gowasu, uh, respectively. <clears throat> Eric Vale, Colleen Clickenbeard... I do apologize if I am pronouncing her name incorrectly, are also reprising their roles as Future Trunks and Mai. Eric Vale will be tr- Future Trunks and Colleen will be Mai. Both characters are sadly missed so much. And Sean Schimmel, the voice of Goku, will be voicing Goku Black. And this is where I kind of have a little... Um, I think this is where they had the wasted opportunity with this. They could have done this with... The actual, like, they brought the original voice actor for Vegeta out of, from the Ocean Dub. They could have gotten the original one of Goku from the Ocean Dub for this. That would have been kind of cool. To have that one being the, you know, darker version of Goku. But, I can see their point with this, but still, wasted opportunity. And whatnot. So... Uh, Dragon Ball Super premiered, as we know, back in Japan, uh, July of 2015. Funimation's English dub uh, premiered on Adult Swim back January 7th of last year. And the first 39 dubbed episodes are posted to Funimation's streaming service uh, in December. It's going to launch additional 13 episode batches two weeks after the final episode of the batch airs on Toonami. Yep. So you can find this, it's out there. But this is just like a massive thing here. Uh, Dragon Ball Super is really getting strong in Japan. But this kind of ties into something else then too, because rumor has it that it's going to be ending in March. And it kind of leads into the next topic or later on in the podcast when I'll explain it. But it is kind of sad at the same time, and I understand why, but this was something that I had marked about beforehand that it would be a stupid idea to do and in all honesty I kind of agree with that yet the statement that I made to this day I still agree with it um but yeah so it's not really that bad of a series I like it uh right now they're in the uh, universe tournament arc it's still going on yet uh Goku and Vegeta are about to uh take on Jiren together both of them using their most powerful forms that they can master Goku in uh Kaioken Blue, or Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, and Vegeta doing his all-power unleashed form, which is pretty cool. I'm looking forward to this fight. This is going to be interesting. So, yeah. So for those of you that have been waiting for the future Trunks arc, congratulations, it's on its way. It's about to happen, and oh boy, is it going to be good. Very, very good. Alright, so... YouTube, wonderful YouTube, oh, great and powerful YouTube. They decided to 
make some additional changes to their uh, YPP or YouTube Partner Program uh, to better protect creators. This entire thing comes about after, and I really want to—I really don't want to blame two people for this, but everyone in the community is basically saying that this is the main reason why they're making more changes for this is because of the Logan Paul and PewDiePie incidents. I'm not going to get into details as to what they are because I don't care. And I want to stress that point right here, right now. I really don't care. I said it before. I will say it again. If people want to act stupid in videos that they want to put up on YouTube, then let them do that. That's their prerogative. That's what they want to do. I am not here to tell them that that's a good or bad idea. If they want to act idiotic, then let the chips fall where they may. Uh, mostly for the fact that I had never heard of Logan Paul beforehand and I don't care to watch anything now. I had heard of PewDiePie before and I don't like him either way. I didn't like him before and I don't like him now. If you like him out there and you're listening to my podcast and you don't like me anymore because I'm not a fan of them, I'll miss you, but in all honesty, I'll be sad if that's why you don't want to listen to me anymore. But like I said, I want to explain why I don't care. For starters... I'm a small YouTube channel, so for me, when I put stuff up, it, it's small. I, I don't have, like, massive adding. Hell, I'm my own sponsor for the podcast. Come on, I'm, a, I'm literally my own sponsor. I'm basically telling you to go to my own eBay page and, you know, check out my own crap that I'm selling. So it's not like I'm up and saying, yeah, you know, and I'm, like, hawking stuff for, like, a site or something else that they're paying me to do. I get no money from YouTube at all. I, I get zero, zip, zilch, denada. Uh, when I, I my channel was monetized, I will admit, I will say this: it was because uh, back when they said that they were going to do it back in April of last year, they changed the rely the requirements to ten thousand lifetime views. There was an error that kept a lot of people in the flow, and I was one of those few people that got stuck in that error. In all honesty, my videos made about two cents. Two cents. And I'm talking the podcast and anything else. Two cents. So, it wasn't worth it. When it demonetized me, in all honesty, I was fine with it. I mostly do these videos that I put up for fun. I review stuff for fun. I do Andrew Rant's videos for fun. I do my review videos for fun. I do the podcast for fun. Any video I put up, I mostly do for fun. So I want to try to do a couple things that I have planned later on in the year. So YouTube changing their part, their uh, partner policy program or their partner program, whatever they want to call it, to better protect the creators. I agree that it's a good idea. That you know, make changes to stuff. But the way that they're doing it, I will admit it's a bad idea. Because they've uh, changed it up, and I'll get into it as I'm explaining this. They went from the 10,000 lifetime views, uh, now effective February 20th of this year. They're going to implement... They're going to implement a threshold across existing channels on the platform to allow a 30-day grace period. On that date, channels with fewer than 1,000 subscribers or 4,000 watch hours will no longer be able to earn money on YouTube. When they reach 1,000 subs or 4,000 watch hours, they will be automatically reevaluated under strict criteria, which is basically we're going to check their accounts, we're going to see if it's good, and make sure that it's compliant with their policies. Uh, newer channels will have to apply, so on and so forth, ad infinito down the road. <coughs> and... You have to, uh, the eligibility requirements for monetization are from uh, 4,000 hours of watch time within the past 12 months and 1,000 subscribers. And that was starting uh, earlier this week. I want to state this right here, right now. I have no dog in this fight. I am staying as neutral in this as I can. Yes, I think it's a good idea, but at the same time, I am also seeing the other side of this coin. And I think that the way you're doing it is a bad thing. So I do agree with some of the people that say that this is a good idea. But at the same time, I'm also agreeing with the ones that say yes. But the way you're doing it is wrong, in my opinion. 
And like I said, I have no dog in this fight. Uh, I do my videos for fun. I make no money off of any of them. As you can plainly see, I make no money off of them. So, I don't have ads running on my YouTube channels. I get, I have no ads running on my channels unless YouTube pops one up just to push something to theirs. I don't know. But I get no ads running on my channels. I have, uh, on my channel, I have no ads at all. I'm my own sponsor for my podcast, and I still work a part-time job, so I can tell you how well this is working out. Just like my, um, you know, associate's degree that I have. I have, yes, here's a little bit you can learn about me. I have an associate's degree. Yes, I have an associate's degree. And it mocks me every single day when I have to leave to put up boxes and stuff at a retail store. It mocks me and laughs at me and points and laughs the whole entire day. Because I spent a year and a half to get that degree, and it basically mocks me every single day. So, yeah, that is, you know, on that. But, the thing with this is that a lot of the um, channels and the creators are annoyed. YouTube's uh, thing is that it's going to affect a significant number of channels because 99% of those affected were making less than $100 per year in the last year. With 90% earning less than $2.50 in the last month. So, in all honesty, what they're doing is they're trying to get rid of the ones that don't have a chance to get to the ones that do have a chance. But, and this is where I'm saying I see both sides of the coin. Yes, that's a good idea. But, at the same time, you're not giving the ones that could become like the next hit sensation a chance to shine... Because now they're not going to get the exposure that they would have gotten beforehand. So there is, there's always two sides to the same argument. And I'm trying to stay in this, like I said, as neutral as I can. Believe me, I, I really want to stay neutral in this. Uh, for so many reasons. Because I just don't want to come off as really idiotic. I don't want to come off as being insensitive, not knowing what I'm talking about. I'm reading it off of the blog post that they had up and I have seen most of the comments of people on Twitter. I have read those. So I kind of see both sides of the coin here. I am seeing it. It's just that I'm trying to stay as neutral as I can on it because I know that it's going to be just one of those, okay, if they do it one way, and I say I agree with it, then I'm going to get hate. But if I go the opposite way, they're, then I'm going to get hate either way. And I'm trying to not, I'm trying my best to avoid that. So YouTube says that one of its core values is to provide anyone the opportunity to earn money from a thriving channel. And while their policies will evolve over time, their commitment to that value remains. Uh, those of you who want more details about this change or haven't yet received this new 4,000 hour slash 1,000 subscriber threshold uh, can continue to benefit from the Creators Academy, their help center, and the resources on the creator site to grow your channel. Otherwise, basically just start figuring stuff out for yourself. It's basically what it is. Um, even though 2017 was a challenging year, thanks to creators like you, it was full of the moments that make YouTube such a special place. Uh, creators large and small established and emerging transformed, established and emerging transformed their talents and originally originality into videos that captivated over a billion people around the world. They made us laugh, taught us about our world, and warmed our hearts. And... I, like I said, I understand the reasoning behind it. They want to try to distance themselves from having any more incidents like PewDiePie and Logan Paul. They want to try to get the massive amount of people that they lost. I mean, you had both of those incidents last year. You had Adpocalypse, which hurt a lot of channels. Believe me, just type in Adpocalypse in a... YouTube search and you will find videos of people talking about it. That hurt a lot of channels. You had a tremendous bad year for them. Uh, well, yes, like I've said, I think what YouTube's doing is a good idea. They're figuring out a way to improve this. 
I will also admit that I agree with the way that they're doing it is wrong. This is one of those, you know, I would sit down, really think about this and go, okay, you know, we have to figure out some type of, you know, thing here. Some type of an ebb and flow for this. I mean, stuff could end up changing, you never know. Things can easily change, things can always be rewritten. Nothing is ever set in stone. But, it's just, you know, one of those things. They're, they explain in the article that while this change will take the potential abuse of a large but desperate group of smaller channels, we also know that the, back, the bad action of a single large channel can also have an impact on the community and how advertisers view YouTube. PewDiePie, Logan Paul. Uh, we'll be working to schedule conversations with our creators in the months ahead so we can hear your thoughts and ideas on what more we can do to tackle this tackle that challenge so it's not like they're just up and saying look this is what we're doing you know you have to suck it up and deal with it they're willing to work with people so that is a good sign on this but like i said um you do have and the fans are the ones that are saying it Multiple fans have come right out and said that this is because of the PewDiePie incident, the Logan Paul incident, both of which brought on, or at least were contributing factors among more into the adpocalypse, which didn't help. So all three of those events are basically what, according to fans and other people online, is what triggered this. Like I said, I had no dog in this fight. I'm only, in all honesty, this is just a topic that I thought, okay... Let me throw my two cents in, because this is that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted to throw my two cents in on this. I wanted to give my part, explain it, because in all honesty, let's just think about it here for a moment. This is, a, YouTube is a business. Eventually, a business that works like this is going to want to figure out a way to improve or change its retrospect of how it does business, how it does everything in general. So it's not exactly like, oh... We're going to up and screw up. Oh, we're not going to do this right. Where is in actuality? Hey, we're going to try our best. We're going to make things work. We're going to try to improve because it's constantly it's evolving. It's constantly changing because one thing can lead to another and you have a thousand little branches sprouting off. So stuff like this is bound to happen on anything. I mean, look how Facebook came to be. I mean, if you take how YouTube originally was when it first came out, to now, you can see all the things that have improved upon it. Some good, some bad, yes, I will admit, but for every step backwards, there's like three steps forward and vice versa. So you're always going to have this give and take, this ebb and flow. So, like I said, I have no dog in this fight. I, uh, really... <clears throat> I really, really don't want to sound like an asshole or a jackass, but I'm going to be honest with you. I have no dog in this fight. I have no, um, no, you know, I I I'm neutral in this. My channel isn't monetized, so I don't have to worry about it. My channel's never going to get monetized. I have 21 subscribers as of today. 21. So, in all honesty, I don't see me hitting a thousand subscribers anytime soon. I have been on YouTube for, I want to say, a while. I've had my channel. I originally, like I said a long time ago, I put up comedy. Then I took that down because it was starting to suck. Nobody was viewing it. And I just figured, okay, I'm just going to take it down and start all over again. And I did. And I started putting the podcast up, you know, after the whole incident with uh, SoundCloud. And it's like, you know, this is where I'm at. So, yeah. This is where I'm at. So, like I said, uh, things are going to end up changing. You can never say that. Things are always going to, you know, evolve. They're always going to change. Something's going to become better or worse. It's the way of life, folks. It's the way things go. 
Is this a good thing that how they came about doing this? Like I said, I will say yes and no, depending on what it is. Yes, I think it's a good idea that YouTube is finding ways to improve this, to improve their partnership program. Do I think the way they're doing it is right? No. And that's going to be my stand on it. I am literally on the middle of the fence. I am seeing both sides of the equation, and I am not choosing one side over the other. And that's the way I want to stay on it. Because, like I said, I have no dog in this fight. And it doesn't bother me, so... There. But that, that's my two cents on it. I just wanted to get that out there. That's my two cents. So, there it is. Alright, so here's an interesting story out of Japan. A Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon card uh, that's one of a kind... And it's on sale for 45 million yen. So deep, deep, deep in the country of Japan lies a place that anime fans know all too well. It's called Akihabara. Ah, yes. Akihabara. Or Akihabara. A place where you can find stores that sell stuff that just make otakus cream their jeans. Yes, I know that sounded weird, but in all honesty, that's what it is. It's Nerdvana for otakus, and for hundreds of other people, but still Nerdvana nonetheless. Well, among the specialty shops, one particular store has a focus on rare and expensive trading cards. Card Shop Spiral regularly updates its wares which can range from 200 yen booster packs to 120,000 yen English edition of the Black Magician Yu-Gi-Oh card. But it's not even the most expensive or rarest Yu-Gi-Oh card in the shop. And like that, as I said, that distinction belongs to the one of a kind Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Now, for those of you that have never played Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, this card is the ultimate card for Blue Eyes White Dragons. Of course, you could also argue that the newer cards from the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie uh, Dark Side of Dimensions took Blue Eyes decks to a whole new level, and I'll agree on that. But for old school players, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon was the combination of your three Blue Eyes cards, and it was one of the simple ones you could summon out by having the three Blue Eyes in your hand and polymerization, boom, having a 4,500 attack point monster right on the field in one turn. So, uh, Twitter user... Saku06 shared images of the card at the shop. Uh, this version was once the prize for the Asian Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship winner as evidenced by the card's accompanying, accompanying case. Only competition prize cards are sealed in custom-made cases. It's actually good to know. Uh, the card also includes a signboard with a signature by Kazuki... Takihashi, the original creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! Bless you, sir. Uh, Saku06 was the previous owner of the card set and attempted to sell it for 99.9 billion yen. Billion! Which comes out to $904 million American. Holy crap. And that was back in 2016. So that was like two years ago. Holy crap. Apparently there weren't any successful biters. And the set is now at the card shop spiral. Or at card shop spiral. For 45 million yen. For those of you out there wondering. That's $400,000. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So, so the Twitter user was the original owner of the card set, wanted to sell it. First off, you're asking an astronomical amount of money. That's almost like um, somebody that doesn't know anything about eBay or selling stuff online and that figures, oh, well, I can get, like, $600 for this. I can get 550 for this. Or I can get 1000 for this. Whereas A, B, and C are only worth maybe 5 bucks, 6 bucks, and 2 bucks, And that's all you're going to get for them. 
So asking 99.9 billion yen, so almost 100 billion yen. Why don't you just go for the even 100 billion there, jackass? For starters, I would have just went for the hundred for the easy 100 billion. Unless taxes and that would have screwed you up. I would have went for the easy 100 billion. And that was back in 2016. You wanted to sell the car. Now it's at Car Shop Spiral because you didn't have any successful biters. Which, first off, no duh, comes to my mind. And now it's on sale for way, way under what you originally wanted. Well, yes, I don't see anyone paying $400,000 for a Yu-Gi-Oh card, even if it's one of a kind. I don't see that happening. Hell, even Tyler the Great Warrior card, that was that Make-A-Wish Foundation collaboration for that kid, I don't even see that going for $400,000. I don't even see that going for $100,000. I could never even see that leaving the kid. Hell, I think the kid will be buried with that car, to be honest with you. He's like a teenager now, or an adult. I don't see that, in all honesty. I really don't see that car ever leaving its, you know, owner's hands. I, I see the owner dying with that card in their hands being lowered into the grave. Along with that person. I don't see that happening. But I just find it ironic that everybody's like, oh, well... You know, this and that. But they think that they can get so much money for stuff like this. It's one of a kind. Okay, that means it's one of a kind. That doesn't give you the right to try to set what you want it to go for. You have to think logically here for a moment. First off, if you're able to get 45 million yen. Million yen for starters here. In a shop that can sell up to 120,000 yen. To 120,000 yen. English edition. English, mind you, not Japanese, English. This is with actual words, not kanji. English edition of the Black Magician. You are not going to get almost 100 billion yen for a one of a kind Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. As kick ass as it looked, and I did see the picture in the article, if I don't have it up, uh, I will try to find it, but it's. It's really, I'll admit, it's like an alternate art form of it, and that's what makes it cool. <coughs> it's like an alternate art of the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. You are not going to get 99.9 .9 billion yen. No way in hell. I think Frosty has a better chance of surviving in hell than you do of getting almost 100 billion yen. You wanted to sell it for nine hundred and four, for almost nine hundred four dollar, nine hundred four million American, and right now it's on sale for a whopping four hundred thousand American. <laughs> Woo! That's what you call a price drop, folks. Woo! In all honesty, if I had a card like that, and it would sell, or even be up for sale for four hundred mil, for four hundred thousand dollars. I will tell you a bunch of things I'm doing with that money right off the bat. Student loans are paid off. Bills are paid off. Cushion for me. You know, investments so that the money, you know, recoups itself so it's not all just completely blown out. It would not be a simple, oh, look, I'm happy. Woo, make it rain at a car shop. No. You do things logically. You think about stuff beforehand. But you wanted Saku 06. You wanted almost a hundred billion yen. Are you insane? Well, you must be if you wanted that much. Holy crap! That's insanity. You wanted that much money for a freaking trading card. For a freaking trading for a trading card! Granted, okay, it's a championship, and I can hear that argument. But it's a championship card. That means it's really cool. It's only awarded to the champions. Yeah, check eBay. You want to know the kicker? A lot of those championship cards can find their way on eBay. They will still have an astronomical price, but check eBay. Because a lot of times, the champions will get, you know, 
tied up or get hard up for money or they'll just go, I don't want the card anymore, and they will pop it up to see what it will go for. I guarantee it. I've seen a few of them from past tournaments that I've read about on eBay, and I've seen a couple of them on eBay. They And they're not the reprints. They're not like, oh, it was part of a set or something. No, it was the actual card from the tournament. On sa for sale on eBay, huge amounts of money. They command huge prices. I mean, there was a person that bought a bunch of the Crush Card Virus cards off of the other competitors from one of the tournaments because it was only given to X amount of people, and this person suddenly had three of them. It's like that answered the question of, oh, well, how'd they get that? Oh, they bought them from the other people. Oh, well, that answered that question then. But anyway, so if you ever find yourself in Akihabara, check out uh, the Card Spiral or Card Spiral Store. Stupid name for a shop. But anyway, it, it, then again, let me put it this way. If you're ever in Japan, just check out Akihabara in, you know, in general. Card Shop Spiral. Okay, that's what it was called. Check out Card Shop Spiral if you ever find yourself in Akihabara. But in all honesty, if you ever find yourself over in Akihabara... Do yourself a favor and check out Akihabara and period. Well, just check it out in general. And then again, if you ever take a trip over to Japan, check out Mount Fuji. Because that site is something that you cannot get a good picture of. And no picture in the world will ever do it justice. None. No painting, no picture will ever do that scene justice. I'm sorry. Never, never, never. Okay, so earlier I was discussing the wonderful thing called Dragon Ball Super. And I kind of have this topic that ties along in with it to a point. So that uh, Kitaro anime uh, series is planning a... Uh, it's going to be an anime. It's featuring a completely new cast. They announced in a video on Friday that a new television anime based on Shigeru uh, Mizuki's GGG no Kitaro uh, manga will premiere on Fuji TV at 9 a.m. on Sunday, April 1st. Now, first you're thinking, well, it's just an April Fool's Day joke. 9 a.m. is the time slot for Dragon Ball Super, because that's what it's currently um, occupied. Toei has not announced, though, whether or not Dragon Ball Super will end or move to a new time slot. Now, this is where the, this article gets interesting because I can actually branch off of this. Earlier this week, I was reading a topic or reading a comment or a post from somebody on Twitter uh, talking about how Dragon Ball Super was going to be moving to Wednesdays. But there was no proof or evidence to back it up. And earlier... Uh, today, I was reading a topic about somebody going, well, Dragon Ball Super's ending in March. And the rumor that's having as to why it's ending is not ending like, okay, it's done. It's ending like a hiatus. And the reason for this is what pisses me off a bit if it's true. Because if it's true, while yes, I understand why it would have to be true, why you want to do this, but at the same time, I'm just really, you know, if it's true, it officially gets an Andrew Rance video. And I will safely say that. If I find out that this rumor or this theory as to why, or this rumor, I should say, as of right now, is why it's ending on in March, there will be an Andrew Rance video for it. I guarantee it. And the reason that the rumor has is, or the rumor for the reason is because they are looking for a new voice actress for Bulma. Now, for those of you that uh, don't know or haven't been paying attention to the podcast or may have forgotten, uh, late last year, the voice actress who plays, who did the voice of Bulma for Dragon Ball Super's Japanese dub, sadly passed away in a freak uh, incident. She just died suddenly, but it was just really sudden. So it's like what you'd call like a freak incident. They have not yet announced whether or not she's going to be replaced or what they were going to do. 
And like I said, this is what's annoying me if it's true. If they're taking the character uh, that delighted so many people, that brought so much joy and love to people, and they're changing up the voice actors because they want to have the character still be a part of the show, that's one thing. If they're doing this because they have no choice, that's another. You could easily give Bulma a nice send-off, say, hey, you know, she's going to space with Jocko or something, have a message, you know, pop up or something, trap her, trap her in another dimension or something. Don't, what it seems like to me, and in all honesty, there's only, if this is the way they're going to do it, there's only really one tasteful way they could do it. If this, like I said, and this is all speculation on the, if this rumor is true. This is really the only way that they could uh, do it without, at least in my opinion, without pissing off the fans. Since Bulma is an inventor by nature, she could have invented something that may have, you know, malfunctioned and may have scarred her voice and changed it. And she just can't figure out a way to fix it. The Dragon Balls won't help, which you figure that would be their MacGuffin for this. Just use the Dragon Balls or Dende. But it's like, no, maybe the new voice will be good. But that's all if the speculation is true. So there's no proof yet as to what's happening with Dragon Ball Super as of right now. It's still on 9 a.m. Sunday mornings in Japan. But heads up to those of you that uh, are watching it. Come March, it's going to end. The end of March, it's done. Uh, at least on Sunday mornings, because this is getting the 9 a.m. time slot on Sunday starting April 1st. And now let's get into this anime and talk about this. So uh, the video that popped up with this uh, for the GGG no Kitaro, which is a stupid name. I mean, that, that is a weird name. Uh, many of the cast members that were, they were listed below in the article, but I didn't really care to name them. Uh, have appeared in previous anime adaptations of GGG no Kitaro, uh, but none are reprising roles. Uh, Koji Ogawa is serving as series director, while Hiroshi, or Hiroshi Onugi from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is handling series composition. Sotaro Shimitsu is the character designer and chief animation director and uh, Yusuharu Takanashi from Fairy Tail and Yaba from Naruto Shippuden are comprising the music. Fuji TV and Yamuri Advertising and Toei Animation are producing this. <coughs> so no wonder Toei's probably fine with this. They don't know. It's like, well, like I said, well, Toei's you know, in production with this. So, Toei's in bed with this. Oh, let's give the 9 a.m. time slot. Uh, Dragon Ball Super is held up there. Oh. Well, we'll announce what we're going to do with that later on. Give the... Sit down, it's going to get the 9 a.m. time slot. Maybe they'll move Dragon Ball Super to 9.30. You know, Ozzy, bump One Piece. What, how many... How long has One Piece gone and it's still going? Over 800 episodes. Bump its ass to a different day. Maybe that'll start getting you back some of the uh, people and the fans that you're missing. Because you want more fans for One Piece. Bump that to a different day. There's an old adage uh, that I know oh so well. If it isn't broke, don't fuck with it. That's an old adage. Don't mess with it. Don't screw with it. Don't fuck with it. Don't do anything to it. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And Japan, I think you need to start trying to learn from that. So, uh, the first anime's adaptations... The first anime adaptation's 50th anniversary website uh, had announced earlier this month that the franchise was getting a new project. Uh, the manga, which began in 1959 under the name Hakaba Kitaro, has spawned several, te several television series, including one Hakaba Kitaro anime, several animated movies, and two live-action films. Oh, God. You all know my thoughts on live-action anime adaptations. The story centers on an inhuman boy who straddles the line between human and supernatural worlds. What? No, 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 no. Seriously, what? 
Characters from the franchise recently appeared in the Yokai, in the Yokai Watch Shadow Side Oni Ono Fukatsu, or Yokai Watch Shadow Side The Return of the Oni King, anime film, which opened last month. Masako Nozawa, who has voiced the main character Kitaro in some of the manga's numerous anime adaptations, reprised the role in the film. Congratulations. That means what to us? No, seriously. Uh, I like the new anime that comes out each and every year. You look forward to what's coming down the pipeline. You look forward to everything else. But this one, and I really don't want to, s to say it this way, but this one's already got one foot in the grave because it's taken a time slot that's held by a beloved series that's loved by a lot of fans. So it's already got one foot in the grave. You have uh, cast members that have appeared in previous anime adaptations of this that are not reprising roles. That's another partial foot in the grave. So that just opens up uh, the floodgates of questions as to what in the hell are you thinking anymore? And that's what scares me, that's what worries me, that's what bothers me with this. But either way, yes, I can see this being good. No, I can see this ending badly. Things do happen. Maybe I'll check out an episode, see what it's about. It might be good. I, I don't know. I've never heard of it before. I I'm being honest. I know a lot of anime. I've never heard of this before. But then again, it, the manga began back in 1959, for starters... I wasn't even born yet. That's 30 years before I was even born. Hell, that manga isn't even 30 years old yet. No way. It isn't even 30 years old yet. I'll be hitting 30 years... Next year. I turn, yeah, I'll turn 29 in August this year. I'll be 30 next year. I haven't even heard of it. So, that'll be 60 years old by the time I'm 30. Wow! It turned 30 the year I was born, and it's going to turn 60 when I turn 30. So, I don't know. That's, you know, what's going on, what's interesting, what have you. But, yeah, like I said, questions for another day and questions that may never get answered. But you never know until you know what happens next. Alright, so it's time to talk about Dragon Ball Fighters. And this is something that I talked about way back last year in one of my previous podcasts. I talked about it because it was announced. It's that 2D or 2.5D um, fighting game. It's been getting a lot of publicity lately. They had the open beta last weekend, which was met with tremendous malfunctions and glitches and bugs. But that's why you have open beta see, in this day and age so that you can let's test these. And figure out, hey, we have an issue. Hey, we gotta fix it. Hey, we got another problem. That's why you have stuff like this. That's why you have open betas to fix this stuff. But, anyway, uh, one of the things with this was a lot of the fans are excited for how it looks, how it feels. The fact that it's basically introducing a new character, sort of an original storyline, which, first off... As much as I hate to do it, I do admit I will agree with uh, Team Four Star with this. All the previous Dragon Ball games that we have gotten have followed the storyline. You are literally playing an episode of the anime series, either from Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, or GT. Ugh. I know, I know, I, I know. It hurts every time I think about it. But anyway, you're constantly just playing one of the episodes. Or in the case of some of the games, the quote-unquote movie. While, yes, there are some that kind of give you the ability to branch off and unlock different things. Budokai Tenkaichi 3 being one of them that immediately comes to my mind. Where you can play as a future Gohan and take on Trunks. Uh, Kid Goku and get... Uh, you take on different characters with different characters. And some of them, depending on what it is, you can actually unlock uh, different things that they'll say before the fight or after the fight, which is actually kind of cool. Like, if you take on, if you have a future Gohan, future Gohan take on Goku, 
you can have Goku ask him why he's so sad. And it's really impressive. But Dragon Ball Fighters has gotten a lot of stuff, and I've been seeing a lot of Easter eggs for it popping up. Basically stuff that's taken from the anime series. Like, you have uh, Yamcha's death pose. You know, with his, oh, you know, when he got, you know, kamikaze by the Cyberman. By the Cyberman. Um, you have Goku taking on Frieza and turning Super Saiyan. Gohan going Super Saiyan 2 against Cell. Gohan blasting Cell with the one-handed Kamehameha wave. Goku using the Spirit Bomb against Kid Buu. And what's interesting about this... Is that... I'm kind of wondering with this... If there's going to be like some type of an achievement... Or something that... Hey! Look what you can unlock... If you... You know, like, unlock each of these like little bonus... You know, Easter egg things. Like, oh, we're going to unlock... Like, okay, you unlock Goku turning Super Saiyan. You not only unlock that clip, but let's say that that gets added to, like, something down the road where you'll get to unlock, like, a really powerful character or an alternate form form or something. Like, oh, now you get to battle as Goku, the end of Dragon Ball Z. You know, like, with his blue gi instead of his orange one, and you can battle a Super Saiyan, you know, Goku that way. Like a color swap palette down the road. Or like you unlock like a secret level or something where you get to take on like hyper-powered forms of each of the opponents to, you know, prove that you really are the strongest. Like, let's say you get all the Easter eggs. Like you unlocked all the little video extras, and you beat the game. All of a sudden it goes, hey, you unlocked, you know, like hyper mode or something where you get to take on every single you know main villain like the saiyans frieza cell boo the androids you get to take them all on again but in a hyper mode like they're powered up their health is maxed out their strength and everything is at infinite you have to try your best to take them down that would be an interesting concept since you can have three on three fights in this <coughs> At least from what I've seen anyway. Dang it, most of what I saw was the PvP matches, so that's still pretty cool. But anyway, I'm getting like really way off on this stuff. But from what I've seen, it looks pretty good so far. I mean, I don't have a system to play it, so I'm not interested in getting it. Though, if I really wish I would have something to play it on. This is that game just looks like it's so cool. But it's just one of those, okay, I'm fine with it. Hey, it's going to be cool to watch, see the uh, storyline and everything else. Looks cool, for starters. I think it looks amazing. But it's just one of those Dragon Ball Z games that I'm just not going to buy. Because I don't have a system to play it. But it looks sweet. If you get a chance to watch any of the videos online, check them out. I recommend checking them out. I mean, it is just so amazing. Seeing how those videos go, seeing everything else... It's just, it's really cool watching a lot of the fights. It literally looks like you are watching a battle from the anime series. And that's what it looks like. I mean, yes, from what I've seen, there are some, what I'd like to call annoying spots. Where like, okay, you know, your character can attack like three times. Like punch, punch, kick. And then there's like a slight two, like two microsecond pause like a one second pause even between that where your opponent can just like start attacking you right off the bat. That's something that I noticed in the videos. Still not a bad thing all in all. But yeah, like I said, it's weird, it's strange, it's unusual, what have you. But anyway, there you go. I mean, it looks pretty cool. I don't know what else I can say about it. All right, everybody, that's going to do it this week for the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. I wish I had more. No, seriously, I, I really do. I mean, I scoured, I tried to find decent topics. I didn't realize it was going to go that quick. And I do apologize if it seemed like they were phoned in. Like I said, I am a little under the weather. I am trying to feel better. <laughs> I really am. Uh... Pretty much because I can't take any sick days from work because I'm not allowed to. But anyway, I'm trying to feel better. 
Uh, but anyway, it's same as always. If you have any topics you'd like me to discuss, you know where to send them. Either on my discussion page here on my YouTube channel or... Uh, email them to me at acrpodcast at gmail.com, or you can even tweet them to me on Twitter at Otaker Roads. Don't forget, you can also follow me on Twitter at Otaker Roads, where I will put up upcoming podcast stuff, talk about some random stuff, at Infinito, same in, same old, what have you. I'm kind of like on there a lot for some reason, I don't know why. And there's plenty of stuff to look forward to. I got some nice videos I have planned for the future. Some fun stuff somewhere down the road. Everything has to come at one point or another. But, unfortunately, this week's episode has to come to an end. And it's really sad to say goodbye for now. But until next time, until next week, same YouTube channel, whatever time you watch me. And I will see you all next time, right here on the absolutely, completely random podcast. Bye, everybody. Take care.